since we got close to bottom. So we're just going to proceed with the triclops. Okay. Lovely. And um, before we take off, if we could tilt up uh, and just to do a quick zoom on the squat lobster, that is 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Whoa, mega sponge. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, go for zoom. So excited. This also might be the biggest squat lobster I've seen on a dive so far. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not small. It is not. This looks uh, very similar. So this species of um, black coral it's on looks very similar to the one we collected a few days ago on our first ROV dive. And uh, this is a species, a, a very well-known, actually, new species of uh, Europtychus. Uh, and it's currently being described, but we don't need more specimens of it. We just wanted to document that association. So if we've got some screen cups, we can uh, proceed onward. So beautiful. Uh, go ahead. I see you have some viewers from Birmingham, Alabama. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Steve, what is the name of the three pronged crinoids? Or are those corals? Three pronged. Um, Maybe they're black corals. And they look like crinoids from a distance. The yellow ones? Uh, negative. Should be coming into view at the top of the frame. In. Where are you looking? Right there. Top what? mid left. This one? No, left. Oh, yes, that's um, Umbellopathy. So ah, okay, yeah. coral. It's a part of a group that was, uh, or a species that was described recently um, from the capstone expeditions. Um, I think it was called Umbellopathy lithocrata, and uh, I believe Daniel was a co-author on the paper that described it. Oh, cool. Is right. it related to Umbelula? Uh, it is not. Oh, right. Only it's through not. its Latin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are related as far as the umbella goes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so everything's sort of stabilized with the vehicles. They're just hanging out here. We can fly around and look at stuff. Yeah. Or we can keep going. Yeah. Let's uh, let's scan in okay. the area that we are um, up off the bottom, and uh, we are ahead of schedule, I think. Hmm. Um, but of course, there'll be a lot to see as we move up. So, Nick, how would you describe this rock formation? Is this or this area? So, uh, I would say that this is mostly uh, pillow lavas, uh, very large pillow lavas, a uh, little bit of a brittle, brittle uh, deformation, maybe. Our viewers at home, if you haven't discovered already, on um, channel three, we have a really, really awesome view. I forgot what we're calling this camera, uh, the Cyclops? Triclops, yeah. Triclops. Cyclops. Right now it's a <laughs> uniclops, monoclops, uniclops. yeah. So Cyclops? So Cyclops. <laughs> it's just clops. Yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess Cyclops, yeah. Yeah, and I... So I just think we have some really, really amazing images coming in on that feed. So in case you haven't discovered that channel yet, go ahead and, uh, especially when we're a bit more stationary, you get some really, really amazing footage. So umbel or umbel umbella in the umbelula is uh, Latin for, it's the diminutive of umbra, which is shade or shadow, and umbel is a parasol or sunshade or umbrella. Mm. Very nice, very nice photos. There is a tremendous diversity here and we could probably spend all day looking at this rock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it, that's, that's, what I, that's the line. That's um, that's but you have to describe the rock the entire time. You can't <laughs> talk about anything else. <laughs> just admire the rock for four hours. Yeah. 
Uh, unfortunately, there's no parking spaces <laughs> on this <laughs> rock. <laughs> so, um, yeah, why don't we put in a move, maybe, yeah, 30 meters or so steps if we can. Roger. Gabby, do you want to get ahead or um, put the move in while we have time? Let's see. We're at 1,800 meters. Uh, let me do. A, let me get a little bit farther up, just in case there's something magical that we see. And like the giant sponge. Then we end up stopping. Yeah, like the giant. Well, yeah. Yeah. Everybody loves a polyopagon. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Who doesn't? Wow. Really? Wow. That's what I'm saying. Ooh. Yeah. So this is, this is one of the things I hypothesized to see on this dive. Um, when we got up on top of the ridge, I think we were in a shadow, a current shadow, in our earlier watch last night, uh, where the sediment was depositing on the down downstream uh, side of the uh, seamount ridge. And so once you get up on top, the sediment clears, lots of current. Current means good flow, good particle capture potential for corals. And you get this and sponges. So, what kind of sponge is this again? <coughs> this is a oh, pharaonomatid or a polyopagon sponge. So, it's in the family pharaonomatidae, and the genus is polyopagon. <laughs> Some people in the chat are referring to it as a professional sponge. That's, I guess, a nod to the yeah. 8 to 12 crew. <laughs> <laughs> Very professional indeed. <laughs> this might be the most professional I've seen. What qualifies a sponge as a pro? I was going to say, yeah. I would like to know. Yeah. I haven't added. That was not in the handover. Can we do um, lasers <laughs> off? We have a really nice shot in Triclops. <laughs> pew, pew. Beautiful. No, no that's pew, only, pew. The, on, that's oh, only okay. the on noise. Sorry. It's, yeah, when they retract it, it's. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any? Uh, can you drift down a, yeah. a tad? Yeah. Really nice. With the Rita Gorgia too. Yeah. Can you uh, uh, pirouette to the right? You have to pirouette though. You have to do it that way. Perfect. Yeah, make sure you put those those minips over the top of your head when you grow it. So this is actually the down current side of polyopagon, the concave side. So that oh, tells the current is actually coming directly from starboard right now, though. Really? Does yeah, it have? It looks like it's got another concave side. Yeah. It's expecting this. Oh yeah. It is a uh, variable. Interesting. Yeah, and, and the Iridogorgia, too, are usually uh, down, so that they point down current. So th it suggests that there's some current variability here. It's not consistent, which is good for biology, um, because that means that you don't have to find the perfect spot to settle. You can just find a good spot. And uh, if you have variable currents, you'll eventually get food. Yeah, cool. Yeah, all right. Okay. Great. Yeah, that Aridogorgia um, is in a very odd direction. It suggests that the current's coming from, you know, like, uh, let's see, where are we pointed right now? We're pointed uh, northwest. Yep, and I'm getting so um, down as slope. A, yeah, current from 045 right now. Coincidentally, a lot of the sea fans, uh, you know, the traditional sea fan shapes uh, are perpendicular to the currents often. So there's a there's a poor organization of sea fans up here, uh, suggesting and further uh, variable current environment. Can we zoom on the sea star? Yeah. There's a great view of the sponge again in the Atalanta cam. You can see the size of it relative to Hercules. Oh, yeah. That's an excellent shot. So, yeah, uh, the second cam. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Hercules is, I think we decided, <laughs> uh, the size of an Escalade. So, uh, pretty large. And so you can get an idea of how humongous that sponge is. Go for is. zoom. 
looks like could be a predation event. Uh, this looks like hypostaria. Which is a goniastrid sea star. Can you explain the predation event? Yeah, when they um, may be digesting a meal, they arch around their target. Mm -hmm. Okay, go wide. Oh, very nice. So, Steve, you were saying that there are different ways that sea stars feed, right? So this one okay. is one that uh, you wanna come up just a bit? protrudes its stomach out mm -hmm. around its prey and slowly digests it over the course of hours and hours. Yep. And then the uh, other one... Years and years, probably. Oh, excuse, oh, excuse wow. me. Years it's, and years. Things are slow here in the deep sea. Can you imagine being slowly eaten over the course of years? Jeez. What critter eats over years and years? Sarlax. What's that? What? What? Did you say Snorlax? Sarlax. <laughs> that oh. was the Sarlax. Not a Pokemon. So what's no. <laughs> what? What animal are you describing? The Sarlax. It's it's the the Could giant you? pit monster from Tatooine. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. And also so a still star. a nerd joke. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just a different kind than we thought. Can I change okay, watches, please? Of travel here? <laughs> uh, well, our direction of travel will be uh, one one zero. Okay. One one zero. Got it. I am ready for that. Except the sarlacc eats its prey on the order of 10,000 years or 1,000 yeah. years. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, my fellow, you fellow back row nerd. Heading? But, Predator? you know, yes. if you are human, you're not going to live that long anyway, so <laughs> it's Bridge nav. essentially going to be, you know, 10 to 30 years. Yeah. Digestion. Good morning. Um, can we do a move 30 meters 110 at 0.2 knots? Am I the only one who was interested in the ecology, the feeding ecology of the sarlacc as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you knew you wanted to be a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> I was Origin more story. In, I was more interested in the dunes surrounding. <laughs> Formations in yeah. which it resides. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, Tatooine used to be a submarine planet, and then it became subaerial. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey. Yo, you early. worked that one right in. That was great. <laughs> I, I have such. I have a chessboard back here that I'm playing. <laughs> it's uh, so far out. By yourself. <laughs> <laughs> one for the subaerial count for the ship. <laughs> Really the the tally. All right. On the bingo, I think can, we, can, we, <laughs> can we settle on watch name as Subaerial? No. S sub aerial Steve? <laughs> sub aerial Squad. Oh, Sub aerial Squad. <laughs> this pains me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you guys that this is the word that I can't stand. <laughs> it becomes and our group name. It sticks. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's just as bad as this mug science squad. <laughs> Go for zero zero pick. Oh, what was the other option, Brittany? Smug science. <laughs> Smug, Smug science. science. <laughs> Smug science squad. Oh, so we've got a couple of black corals here, storopathies on the right hand side, uh, which we've collected extensively through this area. And then possibly, yeah, what's on that black coral? So we've got one of those uh, Europe tychus um, species. And then may this might be either heteropathies or uh, parentopathies, uh, that black coral in the middle, and then um, this kind of stalk, single stalk, unbranched, uh, is probably parentopathies or heteropathies. Most of these we've collected. Um, we just haven't um, okay, go on. had them worked on or examined. Mm -hmm. So if you like to study black corals, have I got the place for you? <laughs> These are some really nice low bait flows. Uh, those are low bait flows? I would say they're low bait, yeah. Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know, they look low baitish, I suppose. No, uh, so a low bait flow is going to 
be a little indicative of a little bit faster eruption rate uh, than a pilibasol. So uh, you're kind of seeing both different uh, mor Go morphologies in this environment. Nice. This is a from Noah Dr. Coral. That's some um, Brittle Star Associates three. Tough to tell what this is. I think it's probably in the genus Norella, based on how it branches. Um, and the, the polarity of the polyps, the way they're pointing when they're retracted. And as we zoom closer, you can actually see some of the articulation of the sclerites, which again further suggests Norella. Very nice. Okay, go wide. We have a lot of records of primnoids here, but um, a lot of the identifications um, really to species need to be made um, from collections, which we also have and have started to reconcile with the, the taxonomy of uh, the taxonomy of the collections with the morphology of the seafloor observation. Some of these unbranched primnoids are almost certainly Norella hawaiensis, which is an unbranched uh, primnoid and has relatively large polyps for its size. And also I've seen some species of, uh, so there's two similar looking species of Norella that have very low sparse branching, um, hypsocalyx and, um, and macrocalyx. And I've seen one morphology at this on dive so far that would uh, indicate oh, either of those that. species. I don't know. It could just be a crinoid, but it looks like there's something else going on up there. Or are the crinoid arms just pointing at us? Oh, never mind. It's pointing right at us. Okay. Go for yeah, so these unbranched corals are probably Hawaiiensis, uh, Norella Hawaiiensis. Hmm. They're, they're too, the polyps are cool. too dense to be Candidella imbricata, which is another at? species. Oh, the pink one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah the pink one is uh, something you can push in a little further? interesting. Yep. This is a Paragorgia colony. Oh, and a cup coral. And a little sponge. Yeah. I think. No? Not a sponge? Goop. Uh, yeah, sponge. Yep. Paragorgia. We've. Uh, okay, go on. The morphology is familiar to me for this Paragorgia species. Um, we've collected a lot of Paragorgids. Well, it used to be the Paragorgia day, but we've collected a lot uh, of Paragorgia here, but I don't think anyone's really championed the identification and description of any of the species um, over the past several years. Um, so that's another opportunity for some taxonomy work that needs to be done. Cup corals as well. Um, I believe from material collected in the Line Islands, we've discovered one new species of cup coral um, in the MCZ collections. Go for Zoom. Uh, graciously uh, assisted by Dr. Steve Cairns at the Smithsonian who has been examining some of the materials. Yeah. So we have umbellopathies in the foreground, no associates on that one, and then what, I'm, what I've been calling Norella hawaiiensis, right in the mid, this uh, large unbranched primnoid. Any uh, more zoom on the primnoid yeah. whip, the white whip? Oh, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. Is this the right one that yep. I'm looking at? Yep. Uh, so it's not Norella. This is Candidella. Pourquoi? Uh, yep. So different genus. Okay. And it's probably Candidella no gigantea um, by, by process of elimination. What indicated to you that that was a different yeah. genus? So uh, when uh, some of the polyps were closed uh, and they were not contracted uh, fully against the axis and Candidella tends to not retract its polyps either up or down, they point straight out 
when the when uh, the polyps are retracted, and that tells us it's probably Candidella. And that's because the sclerite morphology and orientation doesn't allow it to articulate like the other genera. Although I, I've I've seen some descriptions also. Oh, actually, this is new. What's up? Right there. Okay. That's the first. Re first <laughs> the tiniest one. I'm like, there's all these yeah. bright colors and big, beautiful things, and uh, I didn't even see that one. It's a it's a curse to uh, yeah be able to pick out <laughs> some of these things. It's like looking at the matrix. I tell people, <laughs> like everyone else just sees numbers and letters, and I see. Yeah. Corals? <laughs> Species of corals. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. There are worse things. I'll get that zoom set up for you in just a second. Okay, Fortunately, we have a lot of sequences of Candidella um, gigantea. It's, it's very wide distribution in the Pacific, all the way down to American Samoa and further. So this might be the first observation of the dive, but I can't be sure. It's the first observation of our watch of a family we have seldom seen um, on this expedition. Push in further. And one of my personal favorites. Okay. <coughs> Which is the... Yeah. I'll let you know in a second, once I confirm. Um, so I, I believe this is a Paramurisid. Um, a little further? And it's, it's, uh, it's a known species, it's well sampled, um, but we're just gonna zoom to confirm. Yeah, it's a paramerciid. Uh, so that's a, a noctocoral uh, in the family Paramerciidae. Um, probably in the genus Paramericea, but it is something that we're that I'm working on right now to try and better resolve some of Are the, you all the way in? Uh, species oh. uh, okay, sure. and biogeographic okay. boundaries of this group. Uh, Data, do you have everything you need there? <coughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. So the ship has stopped. I think we have a little swing on at Atlanta, but... Okay. Um, science, do we want to keep this pace up? Yep, we can okay. keep moving. Great. Yeah, let's get another one in. Bridge, now. Sparse branching bamboos, more polyopagon. Uh, another three zero meters, one one zero, please. You want to come up just a bit? Just because yeah. I'm right underneath you. Come up. Steve, to your knowledge, what is the rarest known coral? Like, what coral would just make you just, like, lose your mind if you saw it right now? <laughs> Go for zoom. Uh, corals that don't belong in their depth. <laughs> yeah, like, really, really big range extensions. Uh, I'm interested in this over here when we're done with the sponge. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've lined up this shot perfectly, can we not do that? <laughs> can you go wide? <laughs> can you no, go look at this kidding. tiny thing in the corner? Oh, okay, where actually. are we looking? What tiny thing the in the corner? The corkscrew. Red corkscrew. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. He helix. That's, that's pretty cool looking. It's just a little smaller. <laughs> it's so good. It's Gabby's approval. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great zoom, though. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> the zooms are back for the watch, I think. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah, yeah. we got so. the zoomies. I think so. <laughs> back. I uh, I think we should revive uh, putting some coins in the zoom bank. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um. The it's a shorter tether, so like you can get fewer coins in there. But yeah, uh -huh. I like that. I think we were probably running a much longer tether. We could get like way out ahead. So how do you uh, justify which tether to use for which ops? Um, me personally, it's whichever one's on the vehicle. Right. Um, but in general, uh, we have often used like the shorter tethers when the views from the sled are valuable because uh, you can get nice and close. Uh, can you go for zoom? Yeah, so this, this is what um, in the past we've called stickopathies, the black coral. And there's actually kind of re two, really two really interesting Same observations here. Just look at the polyps. There's some, yeah, there's some disagreement on whether this actually is stickopathies or, or, or something else. Um, 
because we also have these very fine, faint yellow um, black coral whips um, in the background that you can see there. Um, and so it seems that there's a couple different black coral uh, unbranched colonies in this area. And I will say we have sampled um, these types of morphologies pretty extensively throughout PRIM. Um, so we won't, won't sample here, but um, it okay, is interesting to note. Yeah, so when we, um, I might not be giving a complete explanation of this, but when, uh, when we want to keep the vehicles closer together, we tend to run a shorter tether. Um, when we want them farther apart, when we need to be able to park the, park the ship and do a, and reach a lot of areas or do engineering work where we want to keep the sled away from whatever we're working on, maybe like uh, two wire ops, like cable lays or something like that. We'll run a much longer tether, can be like 50 meters or 60 meters. Um, but that can be, that can get a little tangly um, and that's got its own sort of penalties. Uh, you're managing just a lot more floaty wire in the water. So there's like some nice middle ground, somewhere around 30 to 40 meters. That's good for, that allows you to stretch out enough to get samples when you're flying up seamounts but isn't so long that it gets tangly and you can't see the vehicle anymore. Um, in low vis, it's also really nice to have a short tether because uh, you can get close and see the vehicle without getting tangled, things like that. Um, but oftentimes, like, we have like a few spares and if something's happened to one, you can end up with just a couple to choose from and they're pretty large and heavy so we don't have a ton of them on the ship. I think we probably have two spares. We've got 10 meters left on that move. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, can we back up like just a, 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 a meter or half a meter? A or meter? Okay. Right in the lower left, a uh, quick snap zoom if you can in, I'll circle it right here. Okay. I think it's a base of something. I just want to confirm that, that circle Go on the for rock. Zoom. Yeah. Okay. It's just a, an old base. Okay. Thanks. Even now it throws me off to see somebody in the windshield. I know, I was supposed to say As Bobby Argus was here. Yeah, TJ's wandering around down there, <laughs> I'm like, ah. Uh, okay, do we want to keep moving here? Uh, Roger, uh, there's an I-4. There's a bamboo coral clade I-4. I think it's the first one that we've seen. Okay. ROV, good to move. Yeah. Bridge nav. So we're, we're just gonna zoom on this one, but it's a, a new, new clade of bamboo corals that I don't think we've seen we on this dive so can add another three zero so meters to one one zero. So this is a Caradoe citidae species, clade I4. Um, and normally we would call uh, genera in this family Isidella, um, but this one, I don't think it, it's formally been named as such uh, since there's a lot of diversity within the clade. But it's an, uh, I believe it's a nodal brancher. Sorry about that video. Oh, good. I think they got a few shots there. Yeah, Go yeah. on. Yeah, that's plenty to make an identification. Just want to note it for the audio log. Sea cucumber at uh, six o'clock. If you need a scoot, you can put some coins in the bank. Okay. <laughs> we can. I can get I can get a zoom on the cucumber though. Go for zoom. I know it's your favorite creature, so Yeah, yeah. Um, makes me feel fulfilled. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I want. Politics. That's what I want for you. Yeah, thank you. One okay, go ahead. zoom. Okay. Okay. Looks like coins in the zoom bank. Maybe. Go in. I won't stop for any charismatic sponges. Mm. <laughs> However what tempting they may be. Very charismatic. Yeah. What about Ignabag? 
Mm. And egg Brittany, did you ask what a enigmatic? We have a. Uh, I can't hear. Am I very quiet? You're quite now. Quiet. You're louder. Is okay. your microphone close to it? It is now. Yep. Okay. You're good. Also, I'm still waking up, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My coffee's too hot to drink right now. Oh no, that's the worst. Yeah. That's the worst. No. But I you tried know it the other day and it burned my tongue. I oh. learned my lesson, so yeah. waiting patiently. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be so much better though for the wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm also just waking up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> seemed, seemed like the right thing. <laughs> seemed like a nice thing to say. Yeah, it, was. <laughs> it was perfect. I just wanted to be encouraging. <laughs> Very encouraged. Steve is fulfilled. I'm encouraged. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. Optimistic Monday. Yeah. Is it Monday? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Not that it matters. It's the day after <laughs> the day after ice cream day. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's the day Mo after mochi, ice cream day. watermelon mochi. Oh, that was so good. T minus six days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have transitioned a little bit from a high density to more of a sparse density or patchy community of more solitary, unbranched colonies of corals. Um, so some something's happened. Maybe we've, um, geology lead Rob have has uh, I indicated that there might be some uh, up and down slopes in this, or areas that are not as intense uh, slopes. There, so there might be you know, some small deviations in slope, which might affect feeding capabilities of substrate um, attached fauna. Steve, do we want to try like zigzagging a little bit to see if we can find uh, yeah, yeah, a we're, ridge? Yeah, we're, we're getting up. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we can, we can. We don't have to zigzag. We can just kind of go up slope go. in the direction okay. of the okay. ridge. Yeah. I think it's go, it veers off to the north-ish. Northeast-ish. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking down slope right now. It's more some more predation event. Right now. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it looks like upslope is to Here's to north ears. to me. Go for zoom. Oh nice. Yeah, so this is a uh, <laughs> really interesting. Um, So this is a hipposteria uh, sea star predating on one of these unbranched corals. Um, okay, go ahead. No, I'm not so yeah, sure it if it's... Uh, that one looks more like Norella. Um, very tough to tell. Some, so what do we got in red wise here? Uh, we're finishing a move. Okay. So we can keep we're moving or... I think we might need to change our direction a little bit because we're about to yep. like go off this... Little yeah, thing, which is gonna get awkward. Okay, let me zig us back then. Yeah. So we can go. So off the ridges to your. Uh, to my see. straight ahead. Yeah. Nick, would this classify as a talus slope or not quite? Not quite. It would I think still with the talus be slope, you'll see. Still uh, be lobe. Um. Yeah. So you go starboard. You're headed up slope. Correct. Uh, if I Am go I port, port. I, I'm at it upslope. Okay. So I think upslope is, it looks like it's a little bit complex. Yeah. Um, but I'm headed sort of downslope now and to, uh, and to starboard. Okay. Uh, Steve. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it looks like starboard we start to fall off here on the way to waypoint four. Yep. Um, so this south end of high pack yep. screen. Um, so do we want to kind of continue this way, even if we miss the waypoint? Yeah, Rog. Okay. Rock, rock, rock. Uh, cool. Let's do. Yeah, we're coming down slope a bit. Well, 
Yeah, turning full to port would lead us kind of off this ridge again. I think we might... I'm gonna, okay. I think if I, so I'm gonna turn to face up slope here because it's just too awkward to fly it straight down and see anything. Um, okay. But uh, I think that's gonna put me at facing almost due north. Yeah, which maybe a is little bit west and north. Opposite direction of where we wanna be heading. Um, so we wanna be heading, I think I think we're kind of like on this little ridge. Yeah. Now we're looking down it. Um, so we could, we might just need to like backtrack a little bit to get back up it. Does that make sense? Um, we could head, if we had... Due north takes us in the opposite direction of where we want to head with our waypoints. Mm, I see what you mean. So get up here and then travel down. Like 15 brittle stars on that. No, that. That makes sense if that's what you're seeing here. Yeah, so they can be pretty dense. And they're predating on the coral, right? No, it's a commensal relationship, or it's hypothesized to be commensal, so they, um, the coral uh, may not benefit or may slightly benefit, and the sea star or the brittle star has a, has a greater benefit out of yeah. that relationship by having a substrate and a some some aspect of protection, uh, potentially from predation by other animals. Okay, so and what do yeah. what do brittle stars eat? They're largely uh, those that are in the colonies are thought to be largely planktivorous. Okay. So they're putting their arms out into the flow and capturing particulate um, that may float by. There's a lot of different. Uh, th there's actually several several different families that are associated with uh, with um, corals. So there may be different, slightly different variations on that theme. Somebody is asking about annotated dive video logs if they're published. Uh, yeah, uh, so there are a lot of annotated dives that have been uh, published via the um, NOAA Deep Sea Coral Research and Te Technology Program. Um, so if you go to their webpage, they have a really nice mapping tool that you can search um, Nautilus cruises that have been annotated, and it'll give you um, geolocated data for species and genera of corals that were observed along a dive. But uh, I don't know how far back that goes. I would imagine um, probably doesn't go back before 2018. Okay. But so. you're going up just now or down so right the now north? Down to right. But those annotations are largely for um, corals and sponges. found any rocks for you yet, Nick. You doing okay over there? <laughs> if you insist, we can always pick up another rock. I mean, I'm just, I'm feeling for you. Just making sure you're not getting the shakes. <laughs> <laughs> What was our r last rock number? 57? 59. 59, okay, yep. so recently. So one hour, in one hour we've done a paltry hundred meters, but the last few watches have been really, really flying. Way ahead of schedule. Which we'll correct. Yeah. <laughs> Slow it down. No, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, certain parts of the dive may be faster moving because just lack of things to see, lack of things to sample. 
So we, it all averages out. Yeah, we have been here for an hour, huh? So three more to go on our watch. That went fast. Yeah, it went fast, especially. <laughs> I'm impressed how fast that went with me not having my coffee. <laughs> I think it's almost getting the drinkable level, so it's going to be good when that happens. you got to add a couple of ice cubes next time. I know. I keep forgetting to do that. I didn't add ice cubes. I didn't add sugar. Yes. Um, I think you can describe this as a talislopia. A lot of loose debris here. Might be something worth picking. Yeah. Uh, science, was that an interest in a rock? Yep. From here? Uh, yeah, I think we might be able to poke around if that works for you. Say again? I think that might be uh, a good thing if that works for you. Yeah, I think so. Should I pause this move? Yeah. Bridge, Nav. We can hold position here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so looking around, see what we have. I see a lot of rocks. They don't look very loose though. Looks like these are all connected right now. It's all pretty encrusted here. Yep. So this is probably the north side of the ridge, I would guess. Kind of hopped over the top and it, it's interesting to see the difference it seems like yeah. on the downside uh, down current side of the ridge it was more crumbly okay so we're on the we're on the high current side uh, yeah uh, up relatively I mean from what we expected oh, you wow, know, the models say drop off yeah I'm just gonna put the turn in the correct direction here This is for future me. <laughs> I'm sure she's grateful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> future me will be thrilled. <coughs> oh. <laughs> nice sponge. No, I'm just oh, admiring okay. the sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Should be more descriptive in my <laughs> oohs and ahs. Yes. I was not allowed to clear my throat. Is that a problem? <laughs> no, sorry. You're absolutely allowed to clear your throat. <laughs> Thank you. I'd also like to reset the DVL when you have a yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Moment. That's also a cool sponge. There we go. Fortunately, we, um, or maybe, maybe unfortunately, I don't know, um, we only have about 100 more meters of vertical to go through on this dive. Oh, well. Uh, so it's it's going to gradually moderate as we get to the summit. Oh, this looks like it could be some loose stuff here. Yeah. Mm. All right. Be in business. Let's see. this loose? Uh, uh, wait, the giant rock? <laughs> no, just like this, this small part. Uh, I guess that's still a giant rock, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a giant rock on a bigger How about, rock. I think I see it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, go, by all means. Uh, it's hard hmm. telling. Potentially a lot of... Center bottom there, like a slightly different surface. Quite large. This one? Very, very yeah. large. That's. Large yes. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. It looks very crusty here. There's a lot of snails or something on that stalk. Uh, sorry, I missed it. Oh yeah. 
I, I was looking for rocks too. I got distracted. Um, <laughs> good zoom on that. You're doing I the right thing. I swear I was looking for rocks. Go for zoom. Uh, these are oh, a couple further? coral too. Yeah, a couple of maybe barnacles, squat lobster. It's a lot of life for a dead spot. Blah, a dead sponge stock. Yeah, and uh, anemones too. Maybe colonial anemones up top. Interesting. Mm. Okay, yeah. go wide. Crinoids. Nice. We're looking for rocks. We are. <laughs> are We're we? always looking for rocks, aren't we? Some heavily crusted lobes. Not sure if we'll find anything loose. But if you see anything up there that I'm not seeing, then by all means go ahead and poke around. Some of this might, uh, it's al it always looks loose from, from far yeah. away and then you get up close. And Especially with Zeus. I've definitely been on RV dives before on Nautilus and other ships where you just, it's everything is cement. It's yeah. We've tried ramming, we've tried braking, we've tried, you know, everything. It's just, it's when you get up on top of the ridges, it gets harder. Oh, this this actually looks really loose, but it might be crusty. That, that pile Have there. you uh, tried dynamite? Uh, still working <laughs> on that okay. plan. Yeah, it's um, not pass not passing the uh, safety okay. safety board approval. Um, but yeah, I'll continue to follow up with that. <laughs> See a lot of botryoidal texture on these ferromanganese crusts. What texture? Uh, botryoidal. It's, uh, this kind of like bubbly looking texture you see uh, from a lot of small nuclei that uh, kind of grow into each other. Oh, okay. Botryoidal, so uh, small parts. Do you have a preference here? I mean, I, I think you could probably try any of these. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, um, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Six <laughs> opportunities of rocks. How big is that? Uh, we count them out for you. Seven now. Uh, is that too big? Number or seven. I think that might be an ideal size. Lucky number seven. I like the counter cam. Yep. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice one. Lifts right out. It's got a. Oh. Yeah, I got a uh, bonus. Uh, it looks like a sponge on it. So that would that would be um, definitely uh, a starboard box, uh, one of the bigger compartments. Yeah. But yeah, I think we have we have plenty of room. Preferably E. Say so that's a good 15, yeah. 20 centimeters. Yeah, that's that's a good size. Uh, and if we Copy can get a, e. a zoom on the life there, <laughs> it, it looks like a sponge. Yeah, so sponge on on the top of the rock. Okay, ready to stow. Okay. I was amazed at how loose that actually was. Mm -hmm. Zero six zero for this one. Yep. Roger. Rock rock. <laughs> Only about two hundred more to go to break our cruise record. <laughs> That's my goal. So let's do it. That's why I'm here. This is the second rock we've collected so far this time. Uh, yep. Yeah, yes. we had the flatter one early. Yeah. Earlier. I'm making up for the first watch where we didn't collect any. All right. Uh, 
So I, I'm not sure what kind of sponge that was. We'll have to look at it. Um, it's probably a glass sponge, but there might be an opioid associate on the inside of it too. But it, it looked like a spongier sponge and not a crunchier sponge. Sorry, so E? Yeah, I, that, that rock that's already in there looks pretty big. Uh, I, I think we should be able to get it in there. I think we can call that a uh, sub-rounded rock. Sub-rounded. Okay. Perfect. Looks like I might need a little tap, maybe. Sub-rounded, yeah, sub that's an yeah. actual term. As a sub-angular. <laughs> it, it is, no, I know. Okay, so explain. I know where we want to go with that, but uh, no, it is a it is a term. It's, um, you know, you have a classification of uh, uh, weathering uh, based off of shape. You know, uh, so I think that thing is going to get uh, like a rounded off. rock will be considered yeah. very weathered. Um, if you look at you know like quartz grains yeah. or sand grains, you can close the box. They're, they're, they're they are round. Okay. They're, they've it been matters. reworked by uh, no, water it's erosion. It's okay. You uh, can close science? it. Uh, tumbled. Are you okay and, with closing uh, it on this sponge? Yep. Okay. Do you want to start kind of inching you know, it in? Like more see angular, you're going to have tap it down uh, more. Uh, uh, less weathering. So, you know, you have this whole spectrum basically between angular and rounded, and kind of in between there, you have subangular and subrounded. Wow. And that can happen in the submarine environment or. Don't say it. Okay. <laughs> Beauty. Right Love it. Cool. Right. Even Steve's had enough. All right. <laughs> I, I appreciate a good one, but I think it was just a little bit. Overused. <laughs> Says the person. <laughs> hey, you know, you gotta slip it in when people are least expecting, and that's that's when it's funny. <laughs> they want to force it. It's gotta be subtle. <laughs> Still funny. <laughs> Still funny. <laughs> I'm very excited because my coffee is now drinkable, everybody. Ooh. Oh, yes. congratulations. <laughs> Amazing right. news. Keep us apprised of how that goes. <laughs> Put it in C log. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> Only took an hour. Bron, when you're getting a shout out, somebody viewing you at home, just passing that along. <laughs> From where? They didn't say where. Um, it says I am Bronwyn's 93-year-old. Was that your? Oh my gosh, it's my 93-year-old grandma. That's what I oh. wanted. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, so. Hi, she's grandma. Watching. That's awesome. <laughs> like I'm not getting anything done. I'm just watching you. Lean left, and you're on camera, Bronwyn. What was that? I said lean left, and you'll be on camera, Bronwyn. <laughs> there you go. The other way in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Did we uh, have the sponge included with that last rock sample? Right. Yes. Okay. Okay, science. Uh, the show stopped, obviously. Anything else we want to do here? No, I think uh, right. We yep. can continue on, uh, kind of reacquire the ridge spine. Okay, Roger. Uh, are we ready to move? Yeah. All right. Bridge, Nav. Uh, we can do another three zero meters, a one four zero, please. We'll see how that works. to the best of our ability. The subtitle for our watch. <laughs> <laughs> the asterisk yeah. down at the bottom. <laughs> okay. So did I hear earlier that we're kind of towards the top of the seamount at this point? Yeah, we're within 100 meters vertical of the summit. Okay. Um, so the slope 
it does gradually moderate here, although it looks pretty extreme where we are right now. And uh, we should just be cresting the top of the seamount with, uh, let's see, what kind of time do we have left? We have probably about eight, eight, to, eight to 10 hours, somewhere in there of bottom time left. Planning to be off bottom by uh, probably no later than 1.30 or 2-ish, but we'll get a revised uh, revised count when it gets closer to the time. Yeah. So we started off at uh, just over 2,900 meters deep, and we have been making our way up this summit. And as Steve just said, we're about 100 meters from the top of it. So our current uh, our current depth is 1,814 meters, and the temperature, in case anybody was wondering, yeah. is a whopping <laughs> yeah a whopping 2.5 degrees Celsius. Oh, warmed so up, balmy. It has wow, warmed toasty. up a bit. Still not not warm enough for me to go diving in that, but. If you want to experience what it feels like, uh, you stick your hand in the pile box after the dive. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. <laughs> it's it, it's refreshing after you've been on the hot deck, though. I'm sure. Yeah. Can you push in further? Yeah, so if anybody's wondering what that is in uh, degrees Fahrenheit, it's about 36.5 degrees. So th this was the coral that I was... Um, Originally calling uh, Norella, but I think might actually be Candidella. Okay, go away. What is the difference between the two? Different genera, different uh, polyp morphology. Okay. Different sclerite morphology. So just visually. Same family. Visually, yeah. how are you able to tell? Um, I'm looking at characteristics uh, of the coral, like number of polyps per whorl, um, how many whorls there are in a certain space uh, along the axis. I'm looking at whether it's branching or not branching. Um, okay. Yeah. Whorl is the official term? Yeah, when in the primnoids, the polyps occur generally in most species in whorls, so mm. like rings around the axis. Interesting. And uh, how many worlds per centimeter and how many pulps per world can be diagnostic. But of course, um, this is where uh, future me says, Go for Zoom. Uh, you should have collected that thing past Steve. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, when you're looking at the video later and you realize, oh, I don't know what that thing is. Oh, that's nice. There's a lot of time travel going on in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch. I, I really you like the future me analogy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I try and do right by future me, but yeah. it doesn't always work. <laughs> so this is um, a colony of Paragorgia, a uh, Coraleid coral, according to the recent revision, with a uh, zoanthid and Stereoschematidae, well, it used to be called Stereoschematidae, now it's called the Urialid family of Ophiroid brittle stars. So the the larger, kind of more opaque brown polyps are a zoantherian, uh, a type of hexacoral, relatives of the stony corals, and the octocoral is the pink part. Two different groups of corals. Excellent. So uh, some viewers are curious about the depth that we are at, the specs about the ROVs and the temperature and all of those things. So that data should be more easily um, accessible now. I think we've got the website configured in such a way where that is just right there on the home page on the right hand side of the live feed. Or if you're watching it on your phone, it might be just below the, the feed, but you should now be able to see that information. Thank you, Kelly. Oh, is that R. Kelly? That's R. Kelly. Oh, hi, Kelly. Uh, not 
Our our Kelly, not our <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> I was going to say, wow, we our. moved up in the world. Our <laughs> Kelly. I hope so. Different Kelly. Different Kelly. <laughs> Different our Kelly. Uh, we're uh, just about complete with this move. We want to keep moving? Yeah, or can we do uh, the next move, like due south and get and see if we can sure. get up back up to the top? Let's do it. Yeah, it seems like it's cresting. I can see in the triclops it's starting to really moderate, and you're seeing more colonies up on top, which indicates that it's probably the getting up to the high point of the ridge. So we're pretty close. Oh, wait, do you want to keep going in exactly as we're going then? Uh, no, I, I, I think I leave it up to you. I'm just pointing out from the triclops, which has a lower, you know, more outward facing view, that it looks like it's flattening out mm. very, okay. very soon. Let me s yeah, let me see. Let me look up a bit. Triclops strikes again. It's a very helpful camera. Oh, the top might just be right there. Oh, yeah. found it. Okay. Uh, can you bring. Atalanta's view to 180. Come down. Yeah, I am. I'm maybe thoroughly enjoying, maybe too much, this uh, this camera, just because of the perspective it gives. Yeah. yeah. Low and out. Um, it helps you see the landscape a little bit more clearly. Almost like you're in a submersible uh, where you can see kind of straight out as opposed to, you know, having to tilt uh, the camera down. It's got a angle. lot more, like the backdrop for each of the shots is a lot more black and yeah. a lot less cluttered. Like it's very high contrast. Yeah, the contrast is amazing. My, own, depth. my only frustration is it, it has a very sensitive focus mm. uh, and it's hard to get a large landscape to be in focus if if you're for uh, if you're closer up that's a beautiful shot though of yeah, this um, really, really yeah, beautiful. coral jeez one two three four five six seven at least nine brittle stars on there i think one of them fell off notice that they're all towards the branch tips too that tells you kind of something about how they might be feeding or why they might yeah, be feeding yeah yeah makes sense yeah it looks like when I'm when it's I'm pointing yeah. 180, we're headed up slope. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do a step that way and see what happens. Does that work for you, Steve? Yeah, yeah, looks good. Bridge nav. Uh, let's do a step three zero meters 180. Just to give some perspective to folks on shore, when we draw these track lines. Um, we're drawing on bathymetry that's 10,000 feet below the ship. Mm -hmm. And so when we put these floating points in space, we assume that they're accurate, but the resolution is some, I don't know, what's the grid size of the bathy? We grid like 30 meters? Uh, stand by. Yeah, something like that. I think it's 100 right now. 100 meters. So anything smaller than 100 meters, we're not gonna really see. It's gonna blend together. Um, so. It, if you're in an airplane at 10,000 feet and you're trying to drop, you know, a hiking trail in a, in a ridge of a mountain that's covered by, you know, trees, you can't see the bottom, you're pretty much just dropping points in space. Um, and so oftentimes some of the most successful things we can do is just like follow our eyes on the seafloor because that, that's not a lie that's, that's right in front of us. Not that the maps lie, they just are. Um, kind of a course poorly resolved in some areas, yeah. Kind of like um, how they describe uh, models, uh, you know, like models of systems, complex systems. All models are wrong, but some are useful. Uh, <laughs> all maps are wrong, but some are useful depending on your resolution. Although I'm very impressed by some of the work I saw uh, last month, or well, I guess it two months ago, um, by uh, some postdocs uh, actually at Adambari that were doing some really high resolution maps of 
Davidson Seamount and uh, areas around there. Um, and some ridges off of uh, the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary where they're able to get super high resolution maps of the seafloor from the ROV that actually included biology. Like you could make out shapes of crabs on the seafloor. Wow. Um, and the scientist, uh, scientist name there was Fanny Girard. She's a colleague who has been doing a lot of work as a postdoc uh, fellow at Ambari. Go for Zoom. Looks like a zoanthid. On a dead sponge, maybe? Yeah. Yep. So I was there. trying to channel you a little bit, Steve, there, like looking at the like tiny little gold thing in yeah. the corner. Yeah. That's <laughs> the tiny stuff doesn't get much attention. Yeah. Okay, much go appreciated. <laughs> I feel like uh, the deep sea deserves an episode of Tiny World. <laughs> Family favorite back home. Uh, so the in front in this glass sponge here, that's a colophacus. Go for uh, zoom. Sponge, very very small. Normally they're much bigger. Look like little mushrooms. Yep. Mm. Very nice. I think there's a larger one uh, in the background. Yeah. Uh, Go wide. I can see the base of it on still cam, yeah. So it's a couple of them. Probably the, 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 mm. Oh, no, not number eight. <laughs> <laughs> are those the same species Large or are those? I think they're the same. Yeah, they might be just kind of like a series uh, you know, of settlement events. Huh. They remind me of dandelions. Yeah. Now the texture of the rock is extraordinary. One of the things I like Go to keep an eye out for uh, at these sites are, are trails. If you see trails in the in the rock, uh, especially on these petroidal rocks, you can see where animals that might be um, scraping the rock for sediments. Uh, like um, uh, monoplacophorans or chitons, sometimes they leave, leave these there trails. There you go, nice. Yeah. So that looks like colophacus. Okay, go on. What is that on the left side of this, like on the sponge on the left side? Like it, a crinoid, uh, maybe? Yeah, crinoid, crinoid okay. yeah. Colophacus is in the family Rosellidae. It's a group of sponges, different from most of the other uh, families we've seen. Most of what we see are euplectelids, um, which have a slightly different morphology. I haven't seen an anemone in a while. Yeah. Oh, that one's gorgeous. So our move is ending. Should we keep oh, going? Wow. Uh. I honestly don't, I don't know if we're going to get to, it looks like the top's right ahead. But yeah. Same direction, or you want to? Maybe back to that, like, 140. 140. We could also split the difference oh. and do 160. Yeah. Or one, uh, that's, yeah, three that's zero. No, that's not how splitting the difference is. <laughs> this is what's one, that? Yeah. My math is off this morning. Yeah, one, one, one four zero. Yeah. Okay. 160. Uh, Iris. Oh, yeah, that's the setting. Okay. I think that's the biggest anemone I've seen. Um, okay, go on. on or maybe you already are. Right? I'm already, uh, I'm already I'm wide. We're just really real close. close. <laughs> you just got a beautiful shot. Bridge nav. Maybe we'll give it a little space. Uh, three zero meters, one four zero.
Well, that's another pair oh, of that, Yeah, the gold coral that you like, which yeah. isn't a gold coral, it's just gold colored, right? Yeah, it's a yellow, yeah. It's a yellow coral. Yellow, and, and, and I, this is a species that is very well known to me. Um, oh. What's going on there? Yeah. A couple weird things here. Yeah. Uh, and I have many specimens that we've sequenced, many specimens, um, and it's not resembling any known species. So it could be a new species uh, that hasn't been described yet, and doing some work up on that. Uh, but it's a it's one of the deepest paramariciid species in the world um, that we can tell. Uh, so generally, we don't find members it's of this family like deeper yeah. than about. 1800 meters with some exception in um, Papanamokuakea. Yeah, that's uh, perfect. We find them down to up to 2100 meters. But it seems to be the same species. Can we uh, put a, um, drop a target on kind of like where the ridge crest was and like breadcrumbs yeah. as we go up? Well, we're thinking this is the top of the ridge. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, under under us. Eventually, we're going to have to start um, kind of just tracking southeast. Um, but yeah, uh, our next move is just one one four zero. Cool. So we're doing that back to that. Yeah, I wonder if the polyopagons just like like the top of the ridge. Yeah, it's definitely a flow condition. Um, yeah, variable that ser they're selecting for when they choose their substrate location. So let's say, for instance, that there was a very, very strong current. Would the coral still be able to grow? It would just maybe grow in a, I think I'm right like a slightly top. different uh, shape or something. Like you know how trees, if there's like a really strong wind or something, constantly they kind of grow to their side. It's pretty much exactly yeah, like that. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can see that in some of the unbranched colonies, um, which kind of grow with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Totally, totally uh, did not plan that one. Um, <laughs> it just happens. It just happens. Uh, but there are an, uh, a number of colonies also that uh, you can determine kind yeah. of potential changes in variability with flow, and depending on which orientation they grow in first. So I think this is like this is like the ridge crest here. You got like oh, wow. it goes down on both sides. So if we go straight southeast which we are um, that's pretty much going to put us on a path towards the summit um, there's something else i wanted to say i forgot speaking uh, of rocks rocks <laughs> couldn't <laughs> be that <laughs> we're talking about currents and how it shapes the coral and right um, rocks <laughs> Just the subliminal rocks. <laughs> Very large stick of pathies up here. This orange whips we, s we zoomed on for. Oh, there's a juvenile metallogorgia, which is a species that we haven't often seen. What does it mean to be a juvenile coral? Uh, young. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's not doesn't have like a different morphology that then it, like changes. It has a slightly different morphology. So we've called this juvenile. With Massive air quotes um, okay. because you know no one's really Go for looked at their development over you know, a small area over time. Yeah, I guess what's the difference between juvenile and small? Uh, juvenile would be uh, reproductively immature. But how can you tell? That's the question. Uh, that's that's the, that's why there's air quotes. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. But this is definitely Metallogorgia melanotrichos because it has this uh, very characteristic ophiuroid Ophiocreus oedipus. Uh, which is only found on the Telegorgia melanotrichos worldwide. Hmm. Okay, and so go normally away. when this when this is a quote unquote mature colony, it will lose those um, ax like the axial branchlets uh -huh. and it'll have the the terminal tuft of polyps up on top like uh, Metallogorgia does. 
Interesting. And you can actually see the scars where they lose those branches. So that's why we've been able to infer that they just lose those branches over time. And interestingly, the, yeah, the opioid will move up the colony to the top over, over as it grows and develops. Such a, such a really interesting relationship. Worldwide, we found the same species, the same coral. Can we zoom on, there's a white dot on that rock over there. Can we just do a snap zoom on this uh, little Copy that. nubbin? Our move's running out. Do we want to just keep moving up the ridge? Go for zoom. Uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Just wanted to confirm okay, something. Um, I'm okay to move up more. Roger, ROV moving? Uh, yeah, uh, do you want me to just suss out real quick, make sure it's still gonna go 140? Yeah, let's suss. Let's suss. Shall we suss? <laughs> Please, after you. <laughs> no, no, after you. Fire leave. <laughs> it's looking pretty one four zero. Yeah. I like it for one four zero. Great. One four zero it is. Bridge now. Three zero meters, one four zero. Please. Thank you. So this is the top of the seamount oh, at this point, or do we still have a little bit more to go? There's the adult version of Metallogorgia. Oh. Wow. There, there'll be more. <laughs> there, there will be more, yeah. Okay. It's okay, I can, I can grab this one real mm -hmm. quick. Go for zoom. Brittany, we're on the ridge to the summit, so we're um, at the top of the ridge that we were looking for, but we're gonna follow this ridge up to the, the summit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that Thank the you. terminal branch branches here, it's lost all of these branchlets that come off the side, mm -hmm. and the opioids moved up to the top. Neat. So, Metallogorgia melanotrichos, very characteristic of this depth. Go ahead. And uh, sea mount generally. Everybody just see that brittle star just yeah. fall. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> it's too stressful. Bye. <laughs> so, um, if any of our viewers are wondering, we do use lasers to measure the uh, rocks and animals that we're taking a look at while we're doing these dives. So those lasers are spaced 10 centimeters apart, just to give us an idea of how large or small um, what we're looking at is. What are we looking at over here, Steve? It's a polyopagon sponge. Big fan yeah. shape almost. Yeah, I think they have various axes of you know, concavity. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so it just might be a, the orientation. Uh, I want to touch it so bad. <laughs> This? Oh, no, that's never mind. Where are you looking? Mm, uh, over on the left-hand side. This this white fan looks different okay. than the others. This one here.
stand by while I get a, a view of that. Steve, somebody's wondering, is there an ideal current speed for corals to flourish? Uh, Go for zoom. Unclear, but you can infer from the current you're experiencing and the density and maybe diversity of animals that you've um, seen in area, if it's if it's a good current or uh, too Is this strong. Is the one you were talking That's about? That's right. Yeah, it's a bamboo coral. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Go in. There's also, yeah, some small squat lobsters and some of these black coral colonies. It seems like the black corals are uh, really uh, have strong associations with a lot of squat lobsters, at least in this area. We've made a few collections already, squat lobsters that were associated with either live or dead substrates, um, but making notes of these associations is also important. Steve, would you say you see a higher density of life uh, in these ferromanganese manganese and crested rocks or uh, those flatter sediment regions that we saw earlier in the dive? Uh, yeah, the, the harder stu stuff usually has more diversity of stuff attached to it. Yeah. And that might be indicative of current as well, right? Yep. Yeah, we're not seeing accumulation of sediments except in some of the depressions and pockets. Can we um, zoom in just a touch to get the housing out of the frame of the Zeus? Uh, push in just a little yep, video? Yep. Yeah, there you go. What's going on over here? Yeah, what is that? A uh, dead sponge. Okay to keep moving with another ship move? Uh, um, I'm okay if science is okay. I think so. Okay. I'm okay. Yep. Everyone's okay. I'm great. Bridge now. Uh, we can do another three zero meter is one four zero. There's just a tremendous amount of life on this ridge. Uh, it seems there seems to be some preference for the upslope sides of the ridges for higher densities of animals. So like on the right hand side of the screen, there seems to be a higher density than the ridge we just crossed over. Um, oh, can we zoom? Uh, oh, there, there, quick, please. Or well. Yeah, may I, we may want a sample, actually. You may want a sample? Yeah, okay. maybe. Uh, let's hold that bridge now. This right here. Okay. Hold position. Just giving you a heads up. Um, if it is what my gut says it is. What does your gut say it is? Uh, hungry. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but no. Uh, I, oh, I thought you meant yeah. Generally, uh, no. The coral uh, it tells me it's a it's a bamboo coral, but I'm interested in the associate relationships as well. Oh. So I see something on the coral that that we haven't seen frequently this dive dun, dun, dun. or this expedition. What do you think it is? I think it's a heteroptychus crab on a bamboo coral. Mm. So is, is this a compliant coral that we can probably get through the slurp? Uh, <laughs> uh, I would go, I would box it Okay. Uh, in the forward box, yeah. Okay. We don't have any other bamboo corals in the forward box, right? Oh. It's no. like blows my mind how you were able to see oh, that tiny crab on there. Uh, let's get a rock. zoom on that. Yeah, we're, we're, let's get a zoom up and down the colony. We'll do some scanning before we... Um, pull the trigger on the collection. It's yeah, so can tiny. we do a tight on that region? Okay. And we're going to look all the way down to the base, kind of just okay. panning and tilting down. Uh, yep, beautiful. And if we can zoom center up on that. Go for zoom further if you oh can. Well. 
So yeah, these are Heteroptychus. This is a gen genus of crab that's okay. um, that we have not often seen. So uh, Atalanta's still on the move, so we'll need to take this sample. Yep. Because we'll want to stow it before we start moving again. Great. Um, so, so let's do it. The safest thing to do would be to cut it somewhere here, okay. at, you know, well below the crab. Okay. And it should not jump. Uh, okay. If if handled. Uh, let's do it. As best you can. Oh my God! Come with me. Ah. <laughs> so this is a bamboo yeah. coral yeah. in the Corrado I said today. I'll write all this in the chat. I think Adeline has stopped. So just, just stopped, yeah. Right, right after you the, said that. The chat can be your description for the collection. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, we've got all the time in the world now. Atalanta settled out. Cool. I mean. That's a great spot to snip. Yep. And, uh, yeah. All the time in the world till Good. 8 a.m. Yeah. So yeah. Um, <laughs> we, I think uh, forward, the forward box is going to be preferred because we've got precious cargo. So Lambda, what do we have in Lambda? Let me get fully yeah. uh, But rejected. it's going to get that coral mucusy. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, let's go in lambda. Yeah, we can if we can differentiate them apart. We'll we'll wash them on deck if it does mucus. Not all black corals are mucusy, um, and just the same, not all bamboo corals are mucusy. It's just the propensity to lose the collection is the greater um, problem. Uh, for storing it on the starboard side than the mucus. So Steve, this is a crab, not a spot lobster. Uh, well, so yeah, potentially. Can yeah, I give like you, can it's I give like you rectangle is a square, you know, square is a rectangle <laughs> type of. Under. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so the tail goes in first. Yeah. Okay. So all squat lobsters are crabs, uh, but not all crabs are squat lobsters. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a great idea. And there were two of them on the coral, right? There was one closer to the base as well? Yeah, we suspect that um, it might be a um, mating pair. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but this is a totally unknown relationship uh, since we don't often sample whole colonies with uh, lots of individuals. But that's a beautiful collection. Thank you. Cool. Most animals don't mucus when they're collected like this on the seafloor. Um, but like we were noticing the other day, when the box gets warm, they mucus. Why are you looking at me? Oh, <laughs> well, you're, you're standing up. I'm, I, I have a captive audience. Wait, like, did I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah. Would you like to hear about mucus? Yeah. <laughs> you piqued my interest. <laughs> But that's amazing because that was one of our, um, yeah, uh, priority collections for symbioses. Nice. Uh, that was in the dive. Yeah, that was a great, one. great snip. Yeah. And handling. Ended up in the box. Yeah, very nice. So, yeah. like I was showing you um, the other day, sometimes squat lobsters can be very have high fidelity to their coral. You know, meaning they they won't leave it for anything, um, and sometimes they will lose. Uh, you know, just jump off like the opioids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anything else here, science? Uh, I think we're ready to keep that move c going on. Yeah. Okay. Trucking. Uh, RV, do you want to get ahead with Herc or? Yeah. Sure. Let me know when you're ready. All right, Steve, we're getting a question about, um, I guess there are some little orange anemones that reside on the black coral, and is there a relationship between them? Do you maybe have an idea of what? Okay. Um, uh, there are, yeah, there's a lot of relationships between anemones and, and corals. Um, 
I don't know if there's a lot of I don't know if there's a lot known about the fidelity of certain uh, anemone species with black corals, uh, or if it's just like a generalist situation where they, uh, you know, will settle on any available substrate. Um, so that that's unclear. We do collect anemones though opportunistically when they come up as a part of a you know coral collection. So there are a lot of specimens at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Um, if anyone wanted to look at those relationships. Anemones, I would say, are, are quite undersampled. Um, they are difficult to collect. Uh, they uh, require usually multiple types of preservation uh, in formalin and ethanol to uh, describe the material. Um, and yeah, they, they can they can be quite messy, either gelatinous or or very fibrous. Uh, and if what? they're stuck onto rocks, it's often very difficult to suction them off without damaging it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you have any tricks oh. for getting anemones? Anemone? Anemones? <laughs> oh God. There you go. Uh, anemones off of rocks, because I've never had great luck sampling an anemone, yeah. except for like the one that jumps off of rocks. Yeah, I was going to ask. Once you've collected it, uh, what's the success rate in preserving it? Are you ready for a move? It depends. So some anemones... Sure. Uh, yeah, the, let's do it. Uh, the, the petal disc of the anemone will, will pop off pretty readily, and others that's very, very firmly attached, planted to the substrate. The best thing to do is to try to break the rock, honestly. Uh, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you what? We are, we are in agreement for once. <laughs> for once. <laughs> The antagonism of I the I thought you guys row. were bonding over Finally. the Star Wars thing yeah. a few minutes ago. Sure. <laughs> you had a moment there. <laughs> well, you know, when when uh, when geologists refer to your your uh, specimen of uh, of of research as contamination, that's got kind of a sh <laughs> shot across the bow. Uh, <laughs> Shots contaminating fired. our rocks. <laughs> So That's I wouldn't say we, we threw the first shot there. <laughs> 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 to be fair, we've been around longer. Oh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> you guys were friends like just two seconds ago. Just <laughs> <laughs> play nice. Can you step it's outside the van? <laughs> it's a collegial jab. <laughs> <laughs> collegial jab. Go for Zoom. Gonna get out your... Aggressive negotiations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's nice. That's a... That's a, a, probably a Corella morpharian, which is actually not an anemone. It's an anemone relative. Um, and the Corella morpharians typically have these white knobby tentacle tips um, and, and usually a broader um, oral disc, you know, that disc that surrounds the mouth in the middle. So it, it could be a Corella morpharian, but it's... Uh, Often, often impossible to really tell for certain uh, on the seafloor because a lot of the taxonomic and diagnostic characteristics of okay, anemones and their relatives are internal. And what were those little white specks you see in there? Those are the the tentacle tips. Okay. Uh, they're they're basically uh, have higher densities of nematocysts, the stinging cells uh, of cnidarians. So th that it's like. It's it's opaque because it's such a high density of those stinging cells. Okay. Looks like we've moved on to a pure sheet flow here. A lot of these kind of se semi-sparse branching bamboo corals, I know that um, we had a researcher uh, out with us from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, Mary DeRee, who is doing some work, uh, and also uh, one of our uh, data loggers for uh, from 2020 to just last year. She was on the Kingman and Palmyra crews, and um, she's working on zoom. trying to better identify um, species of bamboo corals like this uh, that might be sparse branchers. Um, trying to identify if they just branched late in life or are they truly maybe unbranched okay, colonies okay. out there. Um, but generally we just try and get zooms on them because we have a lot of bamboo coral material uh, in collections. And 
there's a there needs to be a lot of work done uh, to further revise some of these groups and describe species um, from the clades that have been identified morphologically and now molecularly. Very nice. That was super great, Logan. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. You make it easy for me. Can we drop another breadcrumb and say like Ridgecrest 2 or, so, or Ridgecrest uh, 18, 11 meters? Uh, uh, go for zoom. Sure can. Nice. Paragorgia colony. Getting those Bumble coins in now. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Load yep. up the zoom bank. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Paragorgia colony. It's a typical relationship we see. Um, so th there's a bubblegum coral, oh the red coral, and then there's a, a, a zoanthid, a zoantharian associate. Um, in this case, it's probably a bullegum zoanthus or something like that uh, species. Um, and in the past, we've called that relationship um, Paragorgia coralloides, uh, which is a species of, of bubblegum coral, but um, it's not always clear. What's going on there? Is that an associate? That red uh, star? Or is that a predation event? I'm not sure. Go, uh, go in. Zoom. Oh, that's a Brasingid. Okay. Uh, can we tilt down also? Um, tilt we're down. done with done with yeah we're done with that coral. Can we tilt down or uh, go down? There's a orange dot on the rock right there. Is that what you're looking for? Okay. Yeah. Can we zoom on that? Cup coral or something? Yeah, I think it's the same cup coral we sampled on dive one, which would mean it's uh, in the genus. Yeah, it is the same. Okay. How do you sample those? Uh, suction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the, uh, one? the one that was suctioned um, on the eight to twelve watch on um, dive one or uh, yeah the ROV dive one um, we did was um, Vonella a species that is known from the prim but has not been recorded in Johnson Atoll until this cruise hmm. Vonella concina identified and then you said that was a first first injured start uh, yeah, up in the in the uh, coral, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So those are planktivorous, right? So it was not eating the coral. Right. Yeah. Right. They use the the coral for substrate to kind of get up off the bottom and improve the flow. Uh, yeah. Maximize their catch. Yep. Nick, I don't think we're going to find any rocks up here. No. That's not pretty. We can stop if uh, well, I mean, there's some there. crevice. Maybe. There's a little yeah. fracture. Yeah. Crevice I spoke too soon. Yeah. This ridge was like, I'll show you. you. Yeah, I mean, we have we can sample a lot of smaller rocks, too. We have um, three or four box spaces open. Like a 10 centimeter-ish? Like 10 to 15, yeah. Okay. Science, was that interest in finding a rock here? Yeah, if we can uh, maybe... Look at this area over here. While our ship move is complete, this is a great spot. Atalanta will move a little bit, but not too far. My my big concern with these areas is that they may just be collapsed crust. Um, but you know, I think like like you said, sampling more is better. Mm. It's a it's a numbers game. Collapsed crust being not what you're looking for. Yeah, but I mean, some of it still should still contain some basalt in there. Uh, only a couple centimeters of a uh, crust. I mean, there definitely looks like some loose stuff here. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got. These are 
probably too big here. Uh, see what else we have. Is that loose over there? Hmm. Maybe. Kind of hard to tell from this angle. What about a triclops cam? Not too uh, much. There's just two rocks Try on the right. Out. I mean, they they look loose. Um, yeah. 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 These uh, these, these Actually, look loose. Yeah, but they're big. This looks decent. I mean, we oh. potentially could fit w one more, maybe 15 to 20 centimeter in F, because right there's only well. There's yeah. the two rocks in there already. Okay, never mind. Yeah. We can also dig around a little bit, Maybe lift some rocks. That. There might be something underneath. Okay. And uh, we can pitch a plate after this too before we take off. Okay, sounds good. All right, so maybe this one? Yeah. If we end up taking a small one, maybe we'll keep the plate. It's been flying much nicer, heavy. Oh, that's going to be attached, I think. Yeah. Is it attached? Yeah, as soon as you oh, zoom no, in. Oh, no, it's not. I don't think so. I saw it jiggle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Get the arm in there, though. Push me around. Can zoom in a little bit. That's good. Oh, swing and a miss. It's quite small, actually. Yeah, it might be a little too flat. I would now nah, let's discard that. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that's all crust. Yeah. Um. So something more up here then. Yeah, maybe uh, that one. one of those two, yeah. Mm. We can also pick up a couple of rocks. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to just be one per site. That's up to you. Okay. Go for the twofer. Yeah, why don't you just do two at once? Go wide, or a little bit wider. So yeah, this is just go. one. Is this not big enough, or? Uh, can you rotate it just a little bit, please? It's not too big. I suppose we can give it a shot. Okay. Up to you. Yeah. We'll keep it. Okay. Uh, starboard box. Raj. Okay. It could be in E. E. Okay. going in E? If it fits. I'm sorry? Yeah, if it fits. Okay. There you go. E is the forward one. The little sponge just popped right back up. Okay. E is the forward one. This is 062. 061. 061. Thank you. Uh oh. I have something else, a little 061. Uh -oh. Let's go find out what that is. <laughs> Say that was about 10 centimeters, Steve. Uh, 10, 10 to 15, 15, yeah. I have the bamboo coral with crab associate at 061. Uh, stand by on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had 6-1 written twice, so this one is 6-2. Okay, thanks. Is this 0-6-2? Yeah. Thanks. Did you want to try for another one here? I think we're okay for right now. Drop weight. Uh, actually... So some of our viewers online are wondering about the vehicles that we're using. So they are remote, remotely operated vehicles, ROVs. The main one that we're using on this cruise is Hercules. So that's the one that is sampling and the main video feed that we are seeing online. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so in addition to Hercules, we also have Atalanta. If you take a look on the uh, channel two, you can see the okay. above view of Hercules, and that is coming from ROV Atalanta. So uh, they work uh, in tandem. So Atalanta is kind of like the bird's eye view of Hercules so that we can be able to see what is surrounding the ROV and, you know, just get a better idea of the... Uh, I guess the spatial quality going on down there. So again, there is no we'll keep it person yeah. that is inside of these ROVs down in the depths. If you're wondering how deep they are currently, uh, the depth reading for Hercules is 1,811 meters deep. Where you started off at the very bottom um, at about 2,900 meters. So we've been making our way up the seamount and we're very, very, very close to the top. But you can see it's still pretty, pretty deep. Uh, let's not go too far because I may want to look at some more things in this area before we take off. Roger, we got a pilot swap happening in the front row um, and then we'll be able to look around. They're also wondering if we have anything wary to be, anything that we need to be wary of while we're exploring down here. Uh, I think just mainly making sure that we're being mindful of the specimens or uh, the biology that we're seeing, you know, being uh, sensitive about the coral and the sponges and any other uh, life that we're exploring down here in the in the depths. Um, we are doing some sampling, but you know, trying to be conservative for the most part. Um, getting video footage when we can, getting still captures when we can. Yeah. Uh, just sampling yeah, just trying parts to of so specimens instead of taking the whole thing yeah, when we can. I'll keep Atalanta pointed one for zero. Um, as long as she's moving one for zero, and we're just. Trying yeah, to go we up. have Gabby so and like Karen the that are the pilots of these we'll ROVs, and so the they're doing going. their best to... Before we take off, um, I'd like to zoom on a couple things if we're we can zooming. while we're here. When you're ready, front row. Oh, Karen, I think you're off SPL. Oh, there we go. Yeah, uh, I'm ready. What would you like to look at? Uh, can we zoom in right there? Yes. Go for zoom. Okay, it's a brittle star. A brittle star on a colony of uh, something, probably uh, from Noah colony, probably. Uh, maybe Candidella. This could be Candidella, different species. Maybe Helminthophora. Um, okay, we can zoom out. Yeah, that looks like Candidella very widely distributed species. And then if you could tilt down to just in front of your skids, I have I've been looking at something in the um, triclops. I was wondering if we could look right straight down between our toes. 
right in this area. I can't see it from now, but it's pretty much right in this area. Okay, go for zoom. Trying to find it. Oh, I, I think it's oh is yeah. It then right in front, to the right of the um, camera housing. Yeah, it's behind the camera housing. I think it's just, oh, it's okay. just that close. No. Uh, that's all right. We'll skip it. Uh, okay. We can. I think we're done here. We can carry on. Okay. Rudder. I was noticing some um, gastropods, snails. Um, oh, grazing cool. on some of these black corals. Uh, okay, are we ready for a move? Yeah, one, one four zero. One four zero. Perfect. Bridge nav. Three zero meters. One four zero. Yeah. So, if anybody is just joining us, welcome to the four to eight. Crew SP Elf, <clears throat> uh, feel free to write us in the chat if you have any questions or anything you'd like to say. Do our best to get those questions answered. Squat lobster? Uh, yeah, we can take a zoom on that if you have time. Mm -hmm. This is the... Go for uh, zoom. In an umbrella. Uh-huh. Right? Very nice. So the, we we know this um, relationship between this this particular squat lobster and black corals generally. Um, it seems to be a black coral specific uh, crab. So uh, we just want to make annotations of what it's on. Good. Looks good. Okay. So that was black coral. Yeah, that was uh, Umbellopathy's. Um, Possibly Umbellopathy's Lithocrata. Neat. Which has been described from pretty much the Central Pacific broadly, but right at this depth was, uh, I think, the type, the type locality. Uh, but I think I just had the paper open a few minutes ago. Um, the holotype. Oh, the holotype from. Hutchinson Seamount, south of Johnson Atoll, Ooh. 1,500 meters. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty spot <laughs> That on. photo is, is literally identical to the uh, the type specimen. Wow. So, yeah, Umbellopathy really lithocrata, lithocrata at 1,500 meters, uh, and collected with, should say, the species... of associate, but it doesn't say. Hmm. Some people are wondering about the um, perspective that the ROV pilots have. Are they seeing mostly what we see? Or are you seeing something special? Like, is there a way 
uh, for you to feel, I guess, what the ROVs are doing, or are you just kind of going based only on visuals? We have all of those nine cameras on Hercules, um, but basically we see what everybody else sees. Um, even with the uh, manipulators, there's the capability to use force feedback, um, but it tends to be more of a pain and less useful. Um, so yeah, you're seeing what we're seeing. Ooh, mushroom coral lower left. We have a few more views that then go out over the internet, but just we fly just by cameras. Very cool. Thank you, Gabby. Focus in. This is a mushroom coral, probably in the genus Anthemastus. Not not so common on these dives. We saw a lot more on yesterday's dive. But, uh, yeah. Good to document it. We're just grabbing a screen grab in the, um, t in the triclops. Just give us a second, if you can. Okay. All right. Good. Cool. So we're finishing up a move. Um, anything here we want to stop for or continue on? Uh, continue on. I, um, I think we're continue on. Yeah. Are you good to continue? I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Bridge up. I'm gonna add a three zero meters one four zero. So there's a question in the chat about um, the scientists or the leads of these uh, watches. So they're noticing as, you know, there's a 12 to four crew, the four to eight and eight to 12. Um, the scientists have different varying interests and expertise. So uh, do the activities during a given watch change based along with who's sitting in the chairs and what is the related role of any members of the shore team? So I think Steve and I think it's just you, Steve, that you're, you're kind of um, chatting along with the shore team on this dive, right? So what are, what are the roles of our, all of these different watches and scientists? Yeah, yeah we, have, um, we have a couple of uh, scientists ashore right now, a geologist uh, who has sailed with us before, Amber, uh, from UNLV, yeah. as well as uh, some scientists who study corals. Um, Asako Matsumoto has been a longtime viewer and a uh, colleague from the oh Chiba cool Institute in Japan. Oh, very nice. A red gorgia coming up. Wow. Oh, so pretty. Uh, and so these scientists are helping us to better understand the, uh, the biology and the geology that might exist in this area. We only have how many births uh, for science? 31. 31. So we can only bring 31. Negative 34. 34 uh, people out to sea with us um, in various different capacities. And so we really rely on our scientists ashore to provide the extra context. If we, you know, we can't fit a taxonomic expert for every single type of animal we might encounter and in every type of geology we might encounter. So we really rely on not only scientists ashore that participate in the chat, but also others that provide sampling input um, over the course of the season. And so the watch leads role is generally to uh, uh, provide Doppler reset might be consistency, uh, an application of uh, accomplishing the science obje science objectives for the crews. Obviously, everyone has a slightly different specialty uh, and background from which they come from, which is good. Um, but for example, oh, they're very nice. 